Hey guys, it's Austin from TurboLab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Saab TDO4 turbo. This particular turbo that I'm showing you is one of the turbos that we do an upgrade for. This is the 20T. So before we get started, uh, I do have a rebuild kit for this if you want to buy it. Uh, I'll show you. This is the installation guide right here in this video. So. Uh, the reason why I use the kit that I do is mainly because of the upgraded thrust bearing and uh, because of the upgraded thrust collars. So all the prep work I've already done. So I've uh, taken the, the bearing housing, blasted it, cleaned it, and then uh, I've already had Ian balance this assembly for me. And if if you're not... Uh, balancing your assembly what you can do is just go ahead and mark the compressor wheel the nut and then the shaft location right here at the front of the turbo I like to do that with a little center punch so once you have that marked you can take it apart and restore the balance and then after that you can blast the turbine or in this case I'm using a new one where we're up, we upgraded it and machined the covers, so we went with a TDO4HL 9 blade. And I'll link to all these parts, because I do sell these parts too, but I also use them in my own builds. And then for this compressor wheel, this one's going to be a 50 millimeter wheel. For the other one that I just showed you, this is a 47 millimeter wheel. This is the 20T. And then uh, this, this one we call a 20T upgrade, the 50 millimeter. So let's go ahead and get started with the rebuild. Before you even get started, you do have to grind right here if you're using our kit for the upgraded thrust collar. Uh, there's a better uh, video on that. Uh, if you go to the Evo 9 Turbo Rebuild Kit Instructions or something like that, a video I made, it shows you exactly how to do that. And uh, so anyway, you do have to grind that so that is kind of a downside of our kit, and the reason why it's so this thrust collar will fit because it's it's a uh, 14 millimeter uh, upgrade. So just keep that in mind. So go ahead and put some oil in, and then I always clean all my my parts really well before I install them so I already cleaned them before I started this video and just put the front bearing in make sure it spins good then you're gonna put your thrust collar in with the flat side down that's the part you have to grind the bearing housing to fit properly next you're gonna take the thrust bearing and oil holes go down So next, you're going to take your O-ring, and sometimes you have to kind of stretch it out a little bit. Then oil your O-ring so the seal plate fits in there. Then next, you're going to take your thrust collar. and you're going to put the seal on it and the way that you put the seal on it is just like this right here when you go to put this seal in just be really careful because a lot of times when people say that this kit doesn't work or something, it's because they've bent the front seal. So you just kind of have to work it in there, moving it back and forth. But it's not really that hard to get in there. You just have to be patient. And then uh, you're going to take, or make sure that this oil deflector is completely in the hole because if it's not centered in there it can be in like locking up if you go to put it together and tighten the nut down 
So you're just going to insert this oil deflector goes into the open area and just compress it down. If you have a hard time getting that in, you could always press it in with a socket and then you want to install your C-clip. I just use a pair of these pliers that I got from Walmart and I just ground them down. Be careful with these because it really can hurt you if it flies off. So I usually put my finger here just to stabilize it. And then you could compress it back like that. So next you want to take the heat shield. I blasted mine because it was really messy and install it on the top here and then we're going to squirt some oil, more oil down in here and install the rear bearing and make sure it spins and install the rear seal on the shaft next make sure you oil under the seal and where the bearings will ride. And then you can squirt some more oil on the inside of the journal bearings. Then install the shaft. And make sure you're spinning it as you push it in. So next you can install a compressor wheel. Sometimes with the billet wheels you have to heat them up but not always. If you do need to heat it up, sometimes you could just use warm water. Other times you could use like a small Bunsen burner. So we're going to install some Loctite on the compressor and on the shaft threads. Now you need to find your location of the compressor wheel and the shaft. So sometimes when you tighten this, the shaft is going to move, or the compressor wheel is going to move as you turn the nut, and sometimes it won't. So what you'll have to do is just try it and see how it's going to go. And if the shaft, or if the compressor wheel is moving, you'll need to preset it uh, one fourth turn ahead or one fourth turn behind. So since my compressor wheel is going to turn, I need to preset it. So once you have it perfect, it's time for, for you to install the compressor housing. So you have to note where the dowel pin is and where the hole on the compressor housing is and compress and bearing housing. Next, install the C-clip. This is the most hardest part to remove and install. And the reason why is because most people don't have the right tool. So the tool that I have, I bought this pair of pliers at uh, Tractor Supply and I just ground them down. So match up the dowel pin. And install the V-band clamp. So now that you have the V-band clamp installed, you can look at your product, make sure everything's right. This is a 50 millimeter wheel. You can probably tell how much larger it is over the 47 millimeter wheel. I do have this compressor housing on CNC, 
the bearing housing does have to be machined and the exhaust housing has to be machined for this upgrade. Now I did make all the tools necessary to make this uh, turbocharger. If you want you can check out my other video where I talk more about these two turbochargers and what kind of power they're good for. As for the products, uh, all the links are in the description so you can go and check out these different uh, parts and if you want to buy the rebuild kit you can. Uh, thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to learn more about turbochargers.